Okay, so let's design a dynamic array. It feels weird coding this up on my own website, so hopefully there aren't any bugs, but let's get started. A quick refresher is that a dynamic array is also known as a resizable array, aka like an array list in Java or a vector in C++. Now, Python and JavaScript already have resizable arrays by like default, so we'll kind of be working around that. And I also want to mention that this is a follow-up from the dynamic array lesson in the algorithms and data structures for beginners course. So that's like the prerequisite to this. Now our constructor is given some capacity. It's our job to initialize an array, and I'm just gonna call it this for short, with that much capacity. And that means creating an array of that length even if we don't populate it. So in Python, we can do that like this with the uh, capacity that is provided to us. So if this value was four, for example, we'd have an array of four zeros. Now we're also actually going to save that capacity as well because it could be changing. That's kind of the whole point of a resizable array. And once we have that, we've pretty much solved this function below down here, the one called get capacity, because if we're saving it as a variable, all we have to do to get it is just return that member variable itself. I keep misspelling this. And right above that, you can see we have another method to get the size. Getting size is the actual number of values inserted into the like array. Just because we have this much capacity doesn't mean we actually inserted anything yet. So the length, AKA the size of the array is going to be zero initially. So we should probably save that as a member variable as well. And initially it's always gonna be zero because we're not passing any values into the constructor. We're only passing in the capacity. So now we've also kind of finished the get size method down here. We'll just go ahead and return the size. Now for actually retrieving an element, this is pretty much equivalent to to like having an array and fetching the value at like the ith index. And for simplicity in this problem, we're gonna assume that this index i is always going to be valid. So this is actually going to be easy as well. Even though so far we haven't inserted anything yet, we know this is only gonna be called with a valid index. So we can always just return self dot array at index i. Now, right now, if we were to call this when the size is zero, this should actually throw an exception. And we could theoretically have an if statement for that. We could say if i is greater than or equal to self.size, then maybe return negative one or maybe throw some exception. But we're not going to be doing that right now. For inserting, it's also gonna be similar in that the index i is always going to be valid, but this is the first time we're actually adding a value into the array. If we were to try to do this again when the size is zero, in theory, it should throw an exception. But right now we're gonna assume index i is always valid and we would insert a value just like this. At index i, we're inserting the value n that's provided. So, so far so good. Now things are gonna get a bit more tricky because when we push to the end of the array, how do we know where that value is going? You're probably used to using a method like this, like push back or push to the end or whatever it's called in like your language of choice. But where would that value actually go in our representation that we're doing? Well, probably it would go at the array at the index of self dot size. Because for example, if we had an array that looks like this, we only have one value inserted and the others are just zeroed out like this. We would say the size of this array is one because we only have a single value. So the next value is gonna be inserted at index one. That's the idea here. And as soon as we add a value like that, we're going to say our size is gonna be incremented by one. The reason we don't increment in the insert method is because in that case, we're overwriting an existing value. Here, we're actually adding to the length of of the array but there's a catch what if we don't have enough capacity this would actually give us an index out of bounds error like what if like our capacity was four for example but now our size is also four this is going to give us an out of bounds error so we should check for that we should check that if the size 
is equal to the capacity. In theory, you could also say greater than or equal, but that's never gonna be the case. It'll never be greater than the capacity. That wouldn't really make sense. So we check that if it's equal to the capacity, before we do this operation, we want to resize the array. In this problem, that means doubling the capacity of the array. And here for some, like we can keep it simple right now. We can just say resize and call that a method. But we know that we do actually have to implement that below. So let's go ahead and actually do that right now. So initially up above, you can see we had like this much capacity for the array. So now we want to double it. How can we do that? Well, let's allocate a new array and I'll just call it exactly that. New array is gonna be zero times double the capacity. And before I even do this, let's just double the capacity. We know that's what we're gonna be doing. That's the constraint of this problem. That's a requirement of this problem. So take this two times the capacity. And now we can multiply the uh, new array by this capacity. In Python, this just means we're creating an array of length this much. I know the syntax is very different in other languages. So once we create that array, we don't want to get rid of the previous values. So we should copy those values into this array. So I'm gonna do that now. It's not super crazy. We're just going to iterate through uh, the index of our current length, so self.size, we wanna go through every single value in the current array, so self.array at index i, and we want to copy this value into the new array at index i, so just like that. And once we're done with that, then we can probably uh, just reassign self.array. That's the whole point of the resize method to double the capacity of this array. We've already doubled the capacity variable. Now let's uh, update this. So this is now gonna be set to new array. So what this function does is it doubles the space that we have to insert value. So before in our pushback, we didn't have enough space to insert a new value. After we resize it, we will have that space so we can do that. You can see that under the hood, a dynamic array, there's nothing super crazy going on, just some like fundamentals like if statements and for loops. So it really pays off to really get a good understanding of the basics. And now we only have a single method to implement and that's pop back. This one's not gonna be super crazy because once again, we're gonna assume that pop back is always called in a valid way. If that wasn't the case, I mean, I'll also show you how to code that up, but this is an easy problem. So I wanted to avoid too many edge cases, but let's keep it simple. So when we pop back, we know that we're going to, uh, we're assuming it's always valid. So we're going to decrement the length by one. We called it the size. So let's do that. And we're going to return the element that we popped back. So here we're gonna return self.array at index of size. You might be wondering why are we returning that one? Shouldn't we return size plus one because we just decremented it? No, that's not the case because remember arrays start at index zero. Like if we had an array that looks like this, one, two, three, we know that the indexes are actually zero, one, two. And this array has a length of three. So if we took three minus one, we get to two and two is the value at the index that we just popped. That's what we would return. Notice how this is actually not removing the element from the array. So I guess this is sort of like a soft deletion. There's no reason to delete the element. There's no reason to overwrite it because that's kind of just being maintained by our size. If we were to pop back and our size is already zero, then theoretically we would do something like this, say self dot size. If it's uh, equal to zero already, then maybe let's raise or throw an exception. But in our case, we're not gonna be doing that. So that's pretty much the entire code. I'm gonna quickly go over the time complexity for each one of these. And I just noticed a typo over here. I'm really, really sorry about that. So here we made a bonehead move and did not uh, insert the actual value at that index. So now the code is entirely correct. So this is the entire code, but I'm sure you can see it in the solution tab. I'm gonna go ahead and run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see, it does pass all of the test cases. So let me quickly run through the time complexity for each approach. I think it's pretty self-explanatory that get is going to be a constant time operation. Insert also is gonna be a constant time operation. We know that inserting and reading from an array is always constant time. The constructor, I guess I'll 
go back to is actually going to be big O of N, where N is the capacity, because we are allocating that much memory for our array. We're only doing it once so that when we actually call get and insert, they will be done efficiently. But I'll make a comment. So this is going to be big O of n where n equals the capacity this one is going to be big o of one this one is also big o of one push back here you can see this part is definitely big o of one but what about resizing we know that resizing we're going to have to double the capacity so we're pretty much calling the constructor again we're doubling that and we know that within resize we have like a loop going over the size of the array and we're initializing an array with double the capacity. So theoretically, this is gonna be big O of N, but how often do you think resize is gonna execute? Well, we talked about it in the dynamic arrays lesson, and in the worst case, yes, this is gonna be big O of N, but on average, and that's the important part here, average case is gonna be big O of one, AKA the amortized time complexity. And that's exactly why we double the length of the array every time. Like maybe when we have to push back, we only increase the array by one. We only increase the capacity by one and we still have to run this for loop. That would not be big O of one average time complexity. Going to pop back, since we're doing a soft deletion, this is pretty efficient as well. This is a big O of one and resize is always gonna be big O of N, but we're not gonna be running this very often where N is going to be like the capacity of the array or the size of the array because they're always gonna be proportional. And get size here is gonna be big O of one and get capacity as well is always gonna be big O of one as well. So I'll close things there.